I'm Babette Sana. I have been on a Duluth Indigenous Commission, I believe it's coming up on four years. And uh, so I don't know how much longer I'll be able to be on it. <laughs> four more years. Four more years. Uh, we're about ready to do some good changes here. I'm an enrolled member of White Earth. I live in Duluth. And um, I work with juveniles. And my goal is to be called Grandma Babette by everybody. <laughs> um, there's, I've lived in Duluth most of my life. So, you know, London Road has its own personality. Some of you that aren't from here, you're not going to even know what I'm talking about. But the ones who are from here, you know what I mean. London Road, you know. And then there's the West End, where I'm from, the friendly West End. <laughs> you know, I mean, the West of Louis, uh, but there's uh, another section that I wanted to talk about a little bit, uh, was First Street. My, my family name is Boudreau, or Boudreau, there's two spellings of that, B-U-D-R-E-A-U or B-U-D-R-O-W. Um, my grandmother, Margaret Boudreau, started out in Fondland, and I am so interested, and I'm, I want to say this in front of historians. What happened? What happened in Fond du Lac? I'd really like to know. How, how did that removal happen? Because I feel like my grandmother was enticed to have 80 acres in White Earth. Can you imagine the shock? How many of you have been to White Earth? Okay, not many of you. It's like North Dakota. So to come from Fond du Lac to White Earth had to been back in the 1800s, had to been a shock to get 80 acres of what? Sky and grass. I mean, you know, I always think of that. Um, so that's how we became White Earth tribal members. And from there was my grandmother born, my dad, and then my dad came to Duluth and met my mother. My dad's um, favorite place was First Street. And I don't know if many of you know about First Street. It's, uh, it's still going today. It's been going for years. A big family lives on First Street. My dad always considered the people on First Street his family. And, uh, but one of the beautiful things that happened back then was an Indian center. And it was called American Indian Fellowship Association. We called it AFA. And my uncle, Biff Budrow, uh, ran that Indian center. So if you can imagine, right now, it, it was, there's a liquor store on, on, on uh, First Street. It was upstairs of that liquor store. Back then, there wasn't a liquor store, but right now there is. It was upstairs of that. So when you got upstairs and you turned the corner, you would see red and white checkerboard tablecloths that were plastic and spoons in the middle of the table with um, in, a, in a canning jar. And then coffee was set up, sometimes some soup, uh, always something to eat. And uh, one of the people I remember the most very fondly was Gene Savage. Uh, he was an elder, very, I, I believe he was a very respected elder back then. I was 16 years old. But um, I would visit him every day there, and he would just talk about all kinds of stories that I'll have to tell the historians about you know, for the next story. Um, but he would talk to me about all kinds of things, and he would tell me who I was related to and Von Lack, and, um, and I, I loved visiting with him, and that's what an Indian Center was to us, you know. You'd also see clothes sitting there, so if you didn't have clothes, um, there was always some clothes there. And it was really welcoming. And, uh, and from there was the second Indian Center, which was uh, straight up from there, across the street from the school with the big clock. Right on the corner, that was a really good Indian Center because uh, we got fed every day with great big lunches. And Renee Bennett's grandmother, or mother, I'm not sure if it was her grandmother or her mother, cooked for my dad, who was always there. And uh, so it's kind of like a community thing, you know, when you, when you start looking at these stories, you wouldn't believe how we're all interconnected in these stories. They had powwows there, and I was, I think I was 14, and all the Indian people that were at the powwows kind of made it seem like you, you need to stand up nice and straight when you dance. And, when, and I was doing that, and they were just proud of me, like, look at how she's dancing. So I'd always remember that today when I dance, I stand up nice and proud. Don't sit and look at my feet. So, um... Is it getting close to five minutes? Okay. Well, that's all I wanted to say. It's about, the, about the Indian Center, that I, and, and that's, a, that's a story that's kind of getting 
invisible, like it never happened. And so I don't. I think we need to breathe air into AFA again, as far as you know, people existed back there that held the Indian Center for the streets that had so many uh, people drinking and. They were feeding them and they were doing the best they can with, uh, with, uh, with the bare bones Indian Center. And so I just want to honor our Indian centers that we had back. Miigwech.